This video is about voltage dividers. It corresponds to section 5.1 of the Applied Analog Electronics textbook. Now, the basic idea of a voltage divider is pretty simple. We are going to have a pair of resistors in series. and We're going to put a voltage across them. And here I'm going to use a, a slightly different symbol than I've used before for uh, the node here. I've drawn a sort of inward pointing arrow here to indicate that this is an input port. This is a place where I'm providing a voltage to the system from the outside. I'm also going to draw an arrow coming out here to indicate that this is a voltage for this node that's between the two resistors that's available to the outside. It's pretty common in circuits we draw to have only a part of the schematic actually drawn in a particular drawing and to in use these port symbols, input ports and output ports, to indicate connections to the rest of the system. Now, we've got two resistors here. Let's call them R1 and R2. Or better yet, let's use RU and RD for up and down just so that we can remember which one's which. The trouble with using numeric designators is often very difficult to remember which way you numbered things. All right. What have we got in terms of voltages and currents here? Well, we have a current, let's call it IU through that. We have another current, let's call it ID through that resistor. And we can use Ohm's law to say that um, IU times RU, that's going to be the voltage across this resistor in the direction of the arrow. So that's V in minus V out. And we have ID RD is going to be the voltage across this resistor. And so that's going to be V out minus ground, but ground by definition is zero, so that's just V out. Okay, this looks like possibly all we can do. But if we add one more constraint to this system, we can uh, do quite a bit more. And that is if we say that the current through here, the output current, is zero. Maybe I should write that zero amps to get the units. So if we constrain this thing so that there's no current taken from the output port, so we can look at the voltage there, but we can't take any current from it, then we have based on Kirchhoff's current law that the current coming in through RU has got to go out through RD. We haven't got any other place for it to go. Zero current in the only other place it could go. So that would give us that under that condition, IU is equal to ID. And that means that we can simplify this thing a little bit um, because we can basically just cross out the subscripts there and say, just call that the current. Well, what does that give us? A couple things. One is, what happens if we add these two equations? Well, then we would just get I times RU plus RD, V out minus V out cancel, that's just V in. So that's saying, something we already knew, that if you've got two resistors in series, the current through them is what you would get from having sum of the two resistors. I times RU plus RD gives you the input voltage. But we also have that I times RD is equal to the output voltage. What happens if we take the ratio of these two equations, V out over V in? V out over V in is going to be equal to RD over RU plus RD. Notice that the currents cancel. This is one way of writing the voltage divider equation. Basically it says that we can divide the voltage. That is to say, take whatever V in is and scale it by this amount. You want to write it uh, not in terms of a ratio, but in terms of just what is V out. V out is V in times the ratio RD over RU plus RD. So 
another way of writing the voltage divider equation. Notice that this equation only works when we have this important constraint that we're taking no current out of the middle of the voltage divider. Okay, let's uh, work an example on this just uh, to get uh, some concreteness. Incidentally, this formula, the, whichever way you want to memorize it, is one of the few formulas in this book that's worth memorizing because the voltage divider equation is one of the three fundamental concepts in the book. Voltage dividers, complex impedance, negative feedback amplifiers. This is the first of them. Okay, so let's uh, try a concrete example here with some actual numbers. Let's say that our input is 3.3 volts and then the upper resistor here, let's make it 10 kilo ohms. And the lower resistor here, let's make it 2.2. Um, and 2.2, 22, what should I do? Let's make it 22 kilo ohms. And we're going to take the output voltage there. Now notice I've used a different port symbol here. This is a power port. And it's always, it's sort of T-shaped, and it's always done this way up. Just like the ground is always a downward pointing arrow, we can't rotate either the ground or the power port symbols. The power port symbol is used when we have a constant voltage, particularly a power supply voltage. Um, and that's different from the symbol I drew here, where I said this is an input port. That's the one we use where we have a variable input, something that carries information. When we've just got a constant, we use the power port symbol. Um, and that helps us distinguish between our constants and our signals, the signals that, that actually change and carry information. All right, so what I want to know is, what is the output voltage here, assuming I'm taking no current from it? Well, we're going to have V out is equal to 3.3 volts times the resistor on the bottom, 22K ohms, divided by the sum of the two resistors. 22k ohms plus 10k ohms. And notice that I've included the units as I've written each of these things. Always include your units when you're writing your formulas with numbers. If I'd written 22 here, it'd be confusing. Is it 22 ohms, 22 kilo ohms, 22 mega ohms, 22 watt? Very important to have this checks to make sure that this is kilo ohms, this is kilo ohms, I can add them. If I'd had kilo ohms and ohms, I couldn't add them without scaling one of them first. So always keep the units in the, it's the basic idea of dimensional analysis is always keeping your units with you through the entire calculation. Don't throw them away. Okay, um, and notice here, all the kilo ohms will cancel because the kilo ohms on top, the kilo ohms on the bottom are the same. If one was ohms and one was kilo ohms, we'd have a factor of a thousand uh, to have to worry about. All right, so what do we have? Um, V out is 3.3 volts, and I can't do uh, 22 over 32 in my head. Um, but I can get out a calculator and do it, and I'll end up with something like 2.269 volts. And we'll be using this sort of circuit with power supply and a couple of resistors to get particular voltages that we want for biasing, uh, reference voltages, all kinds of different purposes where we we'll, won't need any current, but we'll need a specific voltage. We'll often get that by using a voltage divider from a power supply like this. Now, um, there are several different ways to think about the voltage divider formula. I mean, as I say, it's worth memorizing, so spend some time memorizing it. But there's a, a graphical way you can look at it that may make it a little easier to remember. And that's to look at it in terms of uh, a linear relationship between voltage and resistance. V equals IR. The, the Ohm's law is a linear relationship. It goes through 0, 0. And V is just scaled by the current uh, from whatever R is. So here we can take a look at, well, what is... Um, Rd plus Ru, we can think of that as just having two line segments along the x-axis, one 
RD on the left there, and one RU on right on the right, which is here drawn in red. And so we have RD plus RU coming out to the bottom triangle there. Let's multiply it by I and you get the vertical line there. That is my input voltage. RD plus RU, that quantity times I, gives me my input voltage. And if you look at what's the output voltage, well, I'm doing the same thing except I'm only going across one resistor here, just the RD resistor. And so the voltage across it is just RD times I, and that gives me my output voltage. And in fact, this linear scaling works in general. You can take, if, if I had a series of resistors, let's, let's um, take a look at what would happen if we had three resistors. So going back to here, what would happen if I took three resistors and I now have two points in the middle Let's call this A, this B. What's VAB? Well, um, if I look at this, let's say this is 10 volts. This is um, 10 kilo ohms, 10 kilo ohms, and 10 kilo ohms. Well, if you just look at that straight line across there, we've got 10k ohms, 10k ohms, 10k ohms. I have 10 volts for this whole thing. So if I look at the slope of this thing, that's 10 volts divided by 30 kilo ohms. That's um, a third of a milliamp. If I do it times 10 kilo ohms to get across one, voltage at this point would be 3.3 volts. The voltage at this point would be 6.3. Uh, well, 3.33, you know, so on, 6.66, so on, volts here, and 10 volts here. And this is point B, and this is point A. Just looking at what's going on here. Each, the voltage across AB is just the difference here, which is, again, 3.33 volts from here to here. Any chunk of I've got here, because the whole thing is scaled by whatever the current is, any resistance that I've got, whether it's at the top, at the bottom, any voltage drop across here corresponds to similar, uh, it's just going to be proportional to resistance. So we, you don't have to limit your voltage dividers to just single tap with two resistors. You can do it with you know any number of intermediate points and just look at what's the resistance between the two points you're looking at compared to the total resistance. And that'll get you your scaling factor for what's the voltage between AB versus the voltage across the whole chain. Okay, that's probably about enough for voltage dividers for now. We'll be coming back to this concept over and over again. Um, so please get familiar with it.